We're going to do page four of trig equations and identities now. Um, I actually took number six and I put it on a separate page because we might need a little bit extra space to explain it in detail. So first let's look at 6a. 6a gives us the cosine of x equals negative one half and it gives us a domain. So uh, remember what we did? We drew a picture of a triangle which satisfies cosine of x equals negative one half. That would be um, x coordinate negative one half. So that would be like a triangle like that, or it could be a triangle that points down like that, right? So the, the, the red triangle, that would be uh, 90 degrees plus 30 degrees of 120 degrees, which would be 2 thirds pi. And then uh, in the bottom, uh, that looks like it would be 180 degrees plus 60 degrees, which would be 240 degrees, which would be, um, let's see, 3 thirds pi, 4 thirds pi. So we already know two angles which give us a cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Now we just need to make sure that we get the domain right. So let's draw the table like we did before. And the left side is going to be x and the right side is going to be cosine of x. And we know that the two uh, limits for our domain are 0 for the minimum and 5 pi for the maximum. And so uh, two of our angles are 2 thirds pi. We know that gives a cosine of negative 1 half. And we also have um, 4 thirds pi, which we also know gives us a cosine of negative 1 half. Um, so we know that uh, those are the two most basic angles. We can find the other angles by adding 2 pi to each one. Now we obviously can't subtract 2 pi from these because if we did it would go below the minimum of 0. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add 2 pi to 2 thirds pi. 2 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi, remember 6 thirds pi is the same thing as, as 2 pi, that would be 8 thirds pi. And um, 4 thirds pi plus 2 thirds pi is, would be 10 thirds pi. Um, 8 thirds pi plus another 6 thirds pi, that would be 14 thirds pi. 14 thirds pi, that would be about uh, um, 4 point something, so that is still smaller than 5 pi. So let's do that. So, 8 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi is 14 thirds pi. And let's leave a little space here because I think maybe we can fit another one in. So we'll put the 5 pi down here. And that we just added 2 pi to 8 thirds pi, we get 14 thirds pi. Now let's add 2 pi to 10 thirds pi. So that would be um, 6 thirds pi plus 10 thirds pi would be 16 thirds pi. 16 thirds pi, that's equal to um, lightly, a little bit more than 5 pi, right? 16 thirds is 5 point something. So we, we'll erase that because that's too big. And so we now know that all of these give us a cos, uh, cosine value of negative 1 half, right? So there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 solutions. So we're moving on to 6C. 6C uh, is this one here, so we can just copy it down here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of algebra to isolate the x here. So we're going to subtract uh, square root of 3 from both sides. That will give us 2 cosine x equals negative square root of 3. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. That will give us cosine x equals negative square root of 3 divided by 2. Uh, now we just need to think of uh, some basic triangle that has a cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2. That would be the x coordinate is negative, so it would be like that triangle, or maybe the triangle that lies below it. And the red triangle would be uh, 180 degrees minus 30 would be 150 degrees. That would be equal to 5, 6 pi. 5, 6 pi. And this one that's below it, that would be uh, pi plus 1, 6, would be, which would be 7, 6 pi. So those are the two basic triangles that have a cosine of negative square root of 3 over 2. And we're going to make a little table like we did before. 
And the left side of the table is going to be x, and the right side of the table is going to be cosine x. And we know that the limits of our domain are 0 and 3 pi, so we'll put those on the top and the bottom of our table. And then we're going to put um, our two triangles. The orange triangle is 5, 6 pi, and the, or the, the red triangle is 5, 6 pi, and the orange triangle is 7, 6 pi. And then let's generate the other angles that are possible solutions. We just need to subtract. Oh, but if we subtract 2 pi, both of these are going to be smaller than 0, so we know we're not supposed to subtract 2 pi. Let's add 2 pi to 5, 6 pi. That would be 5, 6 pi minus 12, 6 pi, because 12, 6 pi is, is 2 pi. So 5, 6 pi plus 12, 6 pi would be 17, 6 pi. And the orange triangle, if we add 2 pi to that, would be 7, 6 pi plus uh, 12, 6 pi, which would be 19, 6 pi. 19, 6 pi. I'm just going to put red 6 there. Okay? And then, uh, let's check. Let's see. 17, 6 pi, is that bigger than 3 pi? No, that is slightly smaller. If it was 18, 6 pi, that would be 3 pi. Ooh, but 19, 6 pi is bigger than 18, 6 pi. So this one, too big. Okay? So basically these are three solutions which give us a cosine value of negative square root of 3 over 2, right, that are within the domain. So that's it for this one. Now we're on 6e. So this is a pretty messy one, okay. First thing we're going to do is we're going to isolate the inside of the uh, sign, uh, but then we're going to stop. Okay, we're not going to go all the way to x. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. That will give us um, sine x plus pi over 3 equals 1 half. And we know that a triangle that has a sine of 1 half, that would be the opposite of 1 half. So it would look like that, or it would look like that. Okay, um, and the first angle would be just 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. And the other angle would be 180 minus 30, which would be 5, 6 pi. So either of these two angles. And uh, let's make a little table to record our answers. Now this table, instead of having one, uh, two columns, it's going to have three columns. The left column is going to be x as usual. The middle column is going to be x plus pi over 3, which is what we have right now, right? And then the last column is going to be the sine of x plus pi over 3, okay? So what we're looking for is anything that makes the sine 1 half, and we already know that we have two answers. We have the red angle, which is pi over 3, and we have the orange angle, which is 5, 6 pi. Um, now, Let's put in our domain um, domain limits. So we have negative 3 pi for the minimum value of x. We have 3 pi for the maximum value of x. Okay, do we have more room? I think we might need more room. Okay, now let's see. The other thing we need to do is we need to figure out if this is negative 3 pi, then what is the value of x plus 3 pi of the domain? That would be uh, negative 3 pi plus pi over 3, so that would be nine, negative 9 thirds pi plus 1 third pi, so it would be negative 8 thirds pi. The, if I have 3 pi as x, then the x plus pi over 3 value would be 9 thirds pi plus 1 third pi, which would be 10 thirds pi. Um, so it looks like our values of red pi over 3 and orange 5, 6 pi would be kind of in the middle because we're going to start subtracting things now. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's subtract 2 pi from the orange uh, angle. And that would give us... Um, 5, 6 pi minus 12, 6 pi, which would be negative 7, 6 pi. 
and oh, that's weird. I made a mistake there. Look at that. I re I miscopied that, right? The answer, the one of the angles is pi over six, not pi over three. Okay, so let's subtract um, two pi from pi over six. Pi over six minus twelve six pi is negative eleven six pi. And I have no idea. Negative eight thirds pi. What is that in sixth? Um, so if we want to change negative eight thirds pi into something six, we would multiply both the top and the bottom by two. So that would be negative sixteen thirds pi. Next to negative sixteen um, sixth pi. Right. So we're not there yet. Let's subtract 2 pi again from this orange one. If we subtract 2 pi from negative 7, 6 pi, that would be negative 12, 6 pi, negative 7, 6 pi, would be negative 19, 6 pi. Ooh, that's too big. So we definitely don't want to do any more than that. So we need to stop there, okay? Um, now, can we go the other way? Can we add um, more to uh, this one or to the red one? Let's add 2 pi to this. If we add 2 pi to, to um, pi over 6, that would be 12 6 pi plus 1 6 pi would be 13 6 pi. Ooh, we need to check to see what 10 thirds pi equals to in terms of 6. We would multiply both the top and the bottom by 2, we would get 20 6 pi. So that last multiplication was fine. Let's add or last addition was fine. Let's add 2 pi to 5, 6. So that'd be 5, 6 pi plus 12, 6 pi is 17, 6 pi. We're still okay. We're still less than that. Next one, 13, 6 pi plus 12, 6 pi is 25, 6 pi. Ooh, we're already over 26 pi. So we can stop there. Okay, so we're actually, these are all the solutions possible. All right, and uh, I'm just going to tidy up a little bit. Take out all the spaces. Okay, so, and all these have, they're equal to one half, right? They're all one half. And then I'm just gonna move this up here. Okay, now I'm gonna look at um, the left side, okay? So now I'm going to adjust all my numbers so that instead of being answers in terms of x plus pi over 3, I need answers in terms of x. How do I get x from x plus pi over 3? I need to subtract pi over 3 every time. Okay. Now, since all these denominators are in 6, what we're going to do is instead of subtracting pi over 3, we are going to subtract, um, we're going to subtract uh, pi over, or 2 pi over 6, okay? So we're going to subtract 2 pi over 6, okay? And that's the same thing as subtracting pi over 3. So negative 11 6 pi minus 2 6 over, minus 2 6 pi, that would be negative 13 6 pi, right? And then what about, what about this one? Negative 7 6 pi subtract 2 6 pi, that would be negative 9 6 pi. We could simplify that one a little bit because negative 9 6 pi, that's the same thing as negative uh, 3 halves pi. 1 6 pi minus 2 6 pi is negative pi over 6. 5, 6 pi minus 2, 6 pi is negative 3, 6 pi, or positive 3, 6 pi. Positive 3, 6 pi is pi over 2. 13, 6 pi minus 2, 6 pi is 11, 6 pi. 17, 6 pi minus 2, 6 pi is 15, 6 pi. And we're done, okay? So that was the last solution. There's one, two, three, four, five, six solutions.
15 6 pi could be simplified into 5 halves pi also, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one. The next one would be g, which is this one. So this one looks like a little algebra problem at the beginning too, right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to divide, or we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So instead of 3 cosine 2x plus 3 equals 0, we got 3 cosine 2x equals negative 3 because we subtracted 3 from both sides. Then we're going to divide 3 both, divide both sides by 3. And then the, the left side is going to be cosine 2x and the right side is going to be negative 1. And then uh, we're not going to try to isolate x any further. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make the table. And basically the table is going to have three columns. And the first column is going to be x. And the second column is going to be 2x, which is the inside of the cosine. And the last column is going to be cosine of 2x. And we're looking for things that make this negative 1. And uh, what angle has a cosine of negative 1? Between 0 and 360 degrees, it would be this angle here. It would be 180 degrees. 180 degrees has an x-coordinate of negative 1 and a y-coordinate of 0. So that would be um, the most basic angle here. It would be 180 degrees is the same thing as pi, right? So we're going to put pi here. And in this particular case, there's no other angles between 0 and 360 that have a cosine of negative 1. So there's a couple angles in the, in the unit circle that only have one solution for sine, one solution for cosine, etc. So in this case, we know that 2x is pi, and we know that our domain is going to be 0, uh, where is it, 0 to 3 pi. Is this one we're doing? No, we're doing, yeah, we're doing this one. So it would be 0, and we're talking about x here. So the x domain is 0 to 3 pi. Now what is the 2x domain? The 2x domain would be 0 to 6 pi. So for 2x, we're going to put 0 to 6 pi. And for x, we're going to put 0 to 3 pi. And uh, so we only have one angle, that's the red angle. Uh, if we subtract 2 pi from the red angle, it would be below the, um, the minimum domain. So we're just going to add, we're going to add, oops, we're going to add 180 degrees to pi, uh, or 360 degrees to pi, that would give us pi plus 2 pi, which is 3 pi. And if we add 2 pi again, that would give us 5 pi. If we add 2 pi again, no, that will be past the limit of 6 pi. So that we know that there's only three angles that are solutions. Now let's figure out what is the x value that corresponds to the 2x value of pi. It would be, uh, let's see, instead of uh, multiplying by 2, we're going to divide by 2. So pi divided by 2 is pi over 2. So pi over 2x value would give us a 2x value of pi. That makes sense, right? A 3 halves pi x value gives us a 3 pi value of 2x. And a 5 halves pi value multiplied by 2 gives us a 5 pi value. Okay. And let's just move these up. Okay. And uh, that is 6G. This one here is I, and this is the most complicated one too, isn't it? So this one, we don't actually have to do too much algebra because uh, there's nothing on the outside of the sign that needs to be simplified, but there is a lot on the inside of the sign, isn't there? Quite complex. So I'm just going to recopy it here. So what angles give us a sign of zero? That would be basically a y coordinate of zero. So there, there would be two angles, right? There would be one in this direction. There'd be one in this direction. So that would be zero degrees and 180 degrees, which would be zero and um and pi okay uh so let's make a little table and we know that uh the x value has to be between zero and pi so if we know that the x value has to be between zero and pi what about the x minus fourth value 
x minus pi over 4 value. So that'd be negative pi over 4 here. Pi minus pi over 4 would be 3 fourths pi. And then four, if we multiply the middle L expression by 4, then we multiply both the left and the right by 4. So negative pi over 4 times 4 is negative pi. 3 fourths pi times 4 is 3 pi. So our domain for 4 times x minus pi over 4 is a little bit different than the, the domain for x. So we, got, we put in our three columns. The left column is always x. The middle column is going to be, let's put um, x minus pi over 4. Actually, this is going to have like an extra column. And then the third column is going to be 4 times x minus pi over 4. And then the last column is going to be the sine of that. Okay? So the sine value we're looking for is always 0, right? And we know that two of the solutions are 0 and pi. And I'm going to write the pi value in orange so that we have two different solutions. And I'm going to put that solution here. So it would be 0 and pi. Those are the two solutions. And let's see, is there a, a solution that's smaller than zero? Well, let's write down our domain value. So the smallest value is negative pi, and the largest value is three pi. So let's see, can we subtract two pi from zero? No, we can't, because if we did, it would be negative two pi, which is smaller than that minimum value. Can we subtract uh, 2 pi from the orange value? I think we can. If we subtract 2 pi from here, we get negative pi. So negative pi is not only the minimum domain value, it is also a solution. Uh, what about the red zero? Can we add 2 pi to that? Yes, I think we can because the maximum value here is 3 pi. 2 pi is below 3 pi. Now let's try to add 2 pi to the orange orange pi value. Yeah, that would be 3 pi. So not only is 3 pi the maximum uh, value for um, the 4 times x minus pi over 4, it is also it is also a solution. So all of these give us a sine of 0. Okay? All right. Now that we have found all one, two, three, four, five solutions for this. Now we're going to adjust these values so that uh, they are in terms, uh, they are for the x value instead. So uh, between these two uh, steps here, we are taking x minus pi over four values and we're multiplying by them four, by four. So instead, if we're going backwards, what we're going to do is we're going to divide by four. So negative pi divided by 4 is negative pi 4. Uh, and 0 divided by 4 is 0. And pi divided by 4 is pi over 4. 2 pi over, divided by 4 is pi over 2. 3 pi divided by 4 is 3 fourths pi. And that's it. And then if we're going to do this last transition, Going from left to right, we're subtracting pi over 4. So if we can go from right to left, we're going to add pi over 4. So negative pi over 4, add pi over 4, that would be 0. 0 plus add pi over 4, that would be pi over 4. Pi over 4 plus pi over 4, that would be pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 4, that would be 3 fourths pi. 3 fourths pi plus pi over 4, that would be uh, 1 pi. Okay, so these are our solutions. 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 fourths pi, and pi.